Loading cargo. Experience? Funny. Who sent you? Nobody. Sorry, Mac. Name's Sam. Sam Crawford. Okay, Sam, but there's no job. What do you mean, no job? This doc's busy. You haven't got enough guys out there to move this stuff, and you know it. Sure, I know it, but there's still no job. What's the angle? Nobody gets to work on this stock without an okay from Fred Farmer. The guy doing all the yelling? No, that's Foghorn Morton boss of this crew. Well, who's this guy Palmer? What's his racket? He runs this stock. Oh, like that, huh? Yeah. Look, I need a job real bad, but I'm not paying anybody. Well, I could use you, you no know, getting away from that. Chris, huh? in an accident. What happened? It's Sloan. We just found him crushed under a crate. He's dead. Okay, get back on the job. I'll take care of it. Right. Still want that job, Sam? Yeah, sure. You may change your mind when you hear what I got to tell you. May change my mind, not a chance. You heard about that guy Sloan getting killed. Yeah? I gave him a job yesterday. He didn't have no okay from Palmer either. It's smooth, 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 and you're sure it's pure. That, my friends, was the voice of a man, an enthusiastic friend of C.V., describing what he likes about champagne velvet, the beer with the million-dollar flavor. You, too, will find that C.V. is smooth from foam to finish. More than that, from your first sip of the rich, creamy foam that billows on top of your glass, right down to that last delicious drop, you'll find C.V. bright and sparkling, light and lively, with a clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure and stamps it as a beer of real premium quality. Premium quality that costs you no premium in price. Yes, sir, it's smooth. Just as smooth and you're sure it's pure. There is no finer beer. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friends. Well, Barney, thanks for coming to the boat. I just wanted to make sure you were leaving. <laughs> uh, look, Clarky, uh, why don't you take a couple of extra weeks? Oh, I couldn't do that, Barney. Oh, well, why not? How would you get along without me? I, I don't know yet, Blackie. Well, it'll be much fun trying. And just for that, I think I'll stay. You flicked the fire I've been looking all over for you. Now, what is it, Mel? They found a dead guy on Pier 37, a guy named Chuck Sloan. Murder? Well, I don't know. The report said accident. Did you say Pier 37? Oh, hello, Blackie. Yeah, Pier 37. Apparently, that's where a guy named Fred Palmer has been setting up his rackets. Yeah, I know. Anything that happens there is no accident. Uh, now, look, Blackie, don't excite yourself. Run along. Don't forget your vacation. I'm not going. You what? I'm not going, Clarity. But you... I've been looking for a chance to get something on Palmer. What about your reservation on the boat? I'm canceling my boat trip so that I can sail into Fred Palmer. Hi, you in charge, Jim? Sorry, Mac. No job. I don't want a job, Mac. I just want some information. Go down to the public library. I don't know a thing. Keep talking that way and you won't see a thing. Cop? No, Boston Blackie. Ah. What do you want? You were in this shack when they found Sloan's body? Yeah, I called in the accident. Anybody here with you? Yeah, some guy named Sam. Sam Crawford, looking for a job. Did he get it? Well, he's working at Sloan's place. I see. Yeah, there he is. You can see him through the window loading the wagon. Thanks. For what? I'll let you know. Sam 
Sam Crawford? Huh? Oh, I get it. Now, look. You go back and tell Palmer not to pay him a cent for this job. Tell him to lay off. Take it easy, Sam. Take it easy. I'm not one of Palmer's boys. Hey, I know you. You're Boston Black. That's right. Now, I what thought... gives with this payoff stuff? Every guy who works in this dock pays Palmer, they tell me. What happens if you don't pay? What happened to Chuck Sloan? Oh. Yeah, Blackie, I could be next. I didn't pay off either. Where does Palmer hang out? A two-story shack at the corner. Which one? Across the street from Maggie's restaurant. You going after him, Blackie? Yeah, where will you be if I want you? I'll be with the rest of the crew over at Maggie's place, eating lunch. You eat your lunch. I'm going to give Palmer some food for thought. Inspector Faraday. Yeah, what is it, Mullen? Here's the lab report on Chuck Sloan. Oh, let me see. Him. Killed, killed immediately. Well, I knew that before. Well, I, I think you'll want to see this, Inspector. Yeah, what's that? The report of the man who investigated the scene of the accident. Mm-hmm. Rope. The, yeah. the rope holding the crate did not break from weakness, but was cut with a sharp instrument. Well, we've got ourselves a case, Mullins. Yes, sir. All we have to do is find the killer. Yes, sir. Stop saying yes, sir. What are you, a uh, yes man? Uh, no, sir. Good. Uh, yes, sir. I, I mean, uh, sorry, sir. Anything come through on fingerprints? No, not a thing. Maybe Blackie found out something. Blackie never finds out anything. You ought to know that by now. How can I, Inspector? I've only been on the force ten years. <laughs> What do you want? Palmer, where is he? I'm hiding him in the desk drawer. Want to look? Very funny. I think I'm so. Boston Blackie. Who are you? Foghorn Morton, if that means anything to you. Yeah, it means you blow awful hard. Oh, why? Where is Palmer? What's it to you? Now, look, Joker, where is Palmer? Get your hands off me. I want to know where Palmer is and fast. Well, you're going to find out the hard way. Uh... Tough type. Oh, all right, I'll soften you. Okay, okay, cut it out. All right. Now, tell me where he is. I don't know. That's on the level. Okay. When you do see him, tell him I came over to level him off. Long hand order, hold on. You inside order, home from. Maggie, how about some service? You're getting as little as I can give you. Wait your turn. Hi, Blackie. Over here. How are you? I saved you a seat. Oh, thanks. You didn't get to see Palmer? How do you know? I saw him walk into the, one of the back rooms about ten minutes ago. Oh, what are we waiting for? Why, not so fast, Blackie. Some of these mugs belong to Palmer. You better sit at the counter a while until a few of them start clearing out. Okay, Sammy boy. Here you next. Hiya, Maggie. Hi. Hey, who's your cute friend? Uh, meet Boston Blackie. Hi, Blackie. What'd it be? Well, now, let me see, honey. Uh, well, right at this moment, I think nothing. Oh, I'm waiting to see His Highness in the back room. Palmer? Yeah. Uh, shall I leave him know you're here? No, I want to surprise him. Oh, well, if you really want to surprise him, there's another entrance behind the phone booth down the hall, first door to your left. Hey, Maggie, you're a sweetheart, baby. You can tell me more later. i got to feed the faces of these guys first. Blackie, look. Yeah. That's Foghorn Morton. So? He's going into the back room. Did he see me? No, I don't think so. You coming along? I don't think I'd better. Remember, I still work here. Can't help it, Palmer. A friend of yours held me up. Who? Boston Blackie. Blackie? Yeah. What do you want? You. Well, I can take care of him. Any more cops been around about Sloan? No, no, no. Hey, look, now let's uh, let's talk money. I'm ready. Here's the score on the take for the last two days. Uh, yeah, the dice games behind the loading shed, 250 bucks. Card games, 360 bucks. Horse room... Nine hundred dollars. A total of... Fifteen hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, well, not bad for two days' take. It could be more, Foghorn. It could be more. I, mean, I don't see how. That's why I'm the boss. Yeah. All right, here's your cut. Four hundred dollars. Hey, what are you trying to do, Palmer? I'm not trying to do anything. Here's your cut. Don't you want it? We got a 50-50 deal, remember? That's out for a while. I got too many expenses. Why, you no good. All right, now hold it. Wait a minute. Here's somebody out in the hall. Keep talking. I'll yank the door open. This won't work. You've got to come across. 
Well, come in and join the party, Blackie. Thanks, Palmer. How'd you get here? I came in on your voice beam. Oh, wise guy. Still a coming, eh, Blackie? Still a cheap crook, eh, Palmer? And you're still sticking your nose into things that are none of your business. Well, this should teach you. Oh, this is going to be a real picnic. Jump in, Bob. Oh, jump oh, in. With pleasure. Pleasure. Ah. All right, come on, Foghorn. That'll take care of Blackie for a while. Let's get out of here. Uh-oh. Homicide Faraday. It is Homicide Faraday. You know, that's a good idea. Oh. I should have thought of that myself. Yeah, you should have thought before you called me. <laughs> Blackie, what do you want, as if it mattered? <laughs> Isn't this awful? Mm-hmm. I call up representatives of the law to report a little incident I had with a man named Fred Palmer. And what do I get? Abuse. Well, as long as you're asking and answering your own questions, Blackie, can't you do it without calling me on the phone? Oh, no. No, I need a referee. Look, Inspector. Uh, you look, Blackie. I'm busy. Working. You know, work, the stuff you're allergic to. Oh, that. Yes, yes, I know. But I want to talk to you about the accident that happened to this fellow Sloan down at the dock. My boy, I have a bit of information for you. That Sloan accident was no accident. We found that the rope holding the crate that fell on him had been cut with a knife. Sloan was murdered. Faraday, I agree with you. Mm, that should automatically make me wrong. What else do you want, Blackie? I want to tell you I'm going to catch Sloan's killer. Oh, huh. Um... Don't be bored, Inspector. What else? I've just come in second in a session with Fred Palmer. Mm-hmm. But meet me at Palmer's place in an hour, and I'll put the killer in the palm of your hand. <laughs> This is it, Barney. Okay, Blackie. Right with you. Here it is. Do we knock or do we walk in on him before he has a chance to run? We walk in. Even if we knock, Palmer wouldn't run out. We'll try the door. Okay. Yeah. It's open. Let's go. I'm with you. Huh. You're right, Barney. What? Look over there. Uh-oh. Even if we'd knocked, Palmer wouldn't have heard us. Somebody's knocked him off. Listen for just a few seconds to a man who knows good beer and who likes champagne velvet. The beer with the million-dollar flavor. Bright and sparkling. Yes, sir. Light and lively. Yes, sir. Clear and clean. Yes, sir. Sir, there is no finer beer. And that's a fact. Go where you will, pay what you will. No better beer than C.V. can be had at any price. No better beer than C.V. can be made at any cost. C.V.'s famous formula provides for only the more costly premium quality materials. Then, C.V.'s careful processing and controlled aging gives you a beer that you're sure is pure. C.V.'s flavor will tell you all of that. You'll find it bright and sparkling from foam to finish, robust and full-flavored as a real honest-to-goodness beer should be. C.V.'s flavor will tell you that you're enjoying a premium-quality beer at no premium in price. You're sure it's pure, and it's just as smooth. And now back to Boston Blackie. Chuck Sloan, a stevedore, is killed in a waterfront accident. Investigation proves it to be murder, and further investigation reveals that Fred Palmer is running a huge waterfront gambling racket with the help of Foghorn Morton, the boss of a crew. Sam Crawford, a stevedore who took Chuck Sloan's place, tells Blackie he's afraid he might be killed because he didn't pay off to Palmer for his job. Blackie and Faraday decide to visit Palmer at his hideout and find him dead, murdered. As we return to our story, it is an hour later, and Blackie and Faraday are still in Palmer's place. Blackie, what are you doing? Stumping the stuff from this drawer on the floor. Nothing to worry about, Faraday. The body's gone, and your fingerprint boys have been all over the place. You didn't kill Palmer, did you, Blackie? Oh, not that I remember. Yeah, that's right. This killing was done by an expert. Uh-huh. 
One bullet right in the heart. That's right. Any idea who did it? Could have been anybody. Your name's somebody. Foghorn Morton, because he wasn't getting his share of the take. Chris, who worked in the office because he wanted to take over. Yeah. Sam Crawford, because he was afraid. Yeah. Or anybody else who wanted to take over this racket. That's right. I see what you mean, Lucky. Nothing else in this drawer. Just pile this stuff on the floor against the wall. Okay, I guess we won't find much else around here. Look, I'm going back to headquarters. Okay. Why are you poking your knife in the wall, Blackie? Oh, I just thought I saw something. I was mistaken. Blackie, are you holding out on me? Now, don't you know better than that? No, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> are you going to stay here? I am going to break out into song. Oh, fine. Murder with music. What are you going to sing, genius? What else but I cover the waterfront? <laughs> Foghorn. Huh? Oh, it's you, Blackie. Well, scram, I'm busy. Why'd you kill Palmer, Foghorn? Look, wise guy, I said I'm busy. I've already told the cops I didn't kill Sloan. I'm not talking about Sloan. I'm talking about Palmer. Why'd you kill him? Why did I what? Why did you kill Palmer? Come on, Foghorn, let's just roll it. Take it easy. Take it easy, you guys. Who's boss around here, anyhow? Hey, you're kidding me, Mr. Blackie. I found the body. Palmer had a hole in his heart. You did it, didn't you? Hey, I don't like that kind of talk. It's true, isn't it? You weren't going to let him get away with cheating you out of your cut. I overheard that much. You wanted the whole thing, didn't you? Ah, shut up. Why don't you admit it, Mark? Shut up, shut up. Where are you going? None of your business. Oh, Blackie. What's, uh, eating fog? I just gave him some good news. Good news? Yeah. Good news for you, too. Yeah? You don't have anything to worry about anymore. I found Palmer dead. We just saw him at lunchtime. He went back to his hideout and somebody killed him. Any idea who did it? Lots of ideas, but they don't lead me to anybody in particular. Did uh, anybody hear a shot? No. Nope. Look, Blackie. Yeah? Even though Palmer's dead and he could have been poisoned to me, I'd like to help you find a guy who's dead. You would? Why? But a guy who killed Palmer will probably take over the racket. And I'll be in the same spot all over again. Don't worry, Sam. Before the killer can put you on the spot... I'll spot the killer. Homicide, Faraday. Don't you ever do anything beside answering phones. Yeah, Blackie, why don't you hang up? I'm busy. Anything new on Palmer's murder? Not a thing. Oh, What's okay. on your feeble mind? Well, I've got a good idea. Beginner's luck. You better ignore it, Blackie. It'll only get you into trouble. Friday, if you'll listen to me for a minute and stop yapping, I'll let you in on a secret. What are you talking about? Remember when we were at Palmer's place and you asked me why I was digging in the wall with my knife? Yeah. I found another forty-five slug. I knew you were holding out on me. Well? Blackie, if I ever talk to you again, I'll deserve these tricks you play on me. Don't talk, then. Just listen. Just... I have a plan to trap our killer. Don't tell me we're going someplace else to find another body dead to the world. No, we're going to catch a murderer dead to rights. Hello, Fargo. Hello. Hear the news? Yeah. You killed Palmer? I was just going to ask you the same thing. Me? That's a laugh. Eh, not so funny. I no. looked into this shack about an hour ago and you weren't here. I took a walk after lunch. Eh, some walk. Now look, character, don't make me no fancy for a murder rap. You ain't so clean. You know something? Plenty. Where were you when I was taking that walk? I didn't see you around when I went by? Look, Chris, this talk between you and me ain't getting us nowhere. What's on your mind? With Palmer dead, I'm taking over. Eh? But I need a number two boy. So? You want in? I am in. What's the split? Sixty for me, forty for you. It's a deal. Okay. Shake. Hey, yeah. Now look, this is just between us. No extra partners, no nothing. Suits me fine, boss. <laughs> Is 
it true, Blackie? About Palmer? Yeah, it's true, Maggie. Gee, I'm glad. You know, I wanted to kill him lots of times, only I haven't been out of this hash house all day. Really? Business for poor pleasure, you know. <laughs> what do you want to eat? I don't know yet. The gang comes in about uh, this time, don't they, for the afternoon break? Yeah, right about now. Good. So who do you think killed Palmer? Well... Uh-oh, here comes the mob. If you want anything, Blackie, you just yell. Hey, Blackie. Did you find anything? No, Sam, but give it time and it'll find me. Hey, Foghorn. Ah. Oh, you again, Blackie. Hey, what are you doing here? Waiting for you. Okay, so I'm here. Now, what do you want? Who takes over now that Palmer's out of the way? Is there any question about that? Yeah. So I'm giving you the answer. I'm taking over. You? Blackie, you're kidding. Am I? Oh. Where do you think I get my dough? By playing footsie with the cops? But you're Boston Blackie. You wouldn't do anything against the law. No, why not? From now on, I'm cutting in. And if anybody doesn't like it, they can cut out. Hello, Chris. Oh, it's you, Blackie. I just heard the news. Congratulations, big man. Don't be coy. It won't get you anywhere. Is that a hint for me to play along with you? Take it any way you like, but I'm the boss now. You take your orders from me whether you like it or not. I don't like it. You're still taking my orders. Maybe, but not for long, Blackie. Not for long. Come in. Oh, hello, big shot. Taking over Palmer's apartment, I see, huh? Close the door, Faraday. There must be a trap somewhere. I thought you weren't talking to me. Well, what can I do? I'm trapped. <laughs> Any luck? No. How much longer are you going to play pigeon? Until the killer takes a shot at me. He may have a good aim. I hope. Thanks. But if he comes to me, I'll take care of him. You will. I've sealed the back entrance to this place. And I can spot anyone coming in the front. Yeah. There's a gun in the top drawer of the desk here. And I've gimmicked the light switch so they can turn it off from where I'm sitting. Yeah, that's great, Blackie, but what about when you go outside? That's the chance I'll have to take. Hi there, Blackie. Hi, Maggie. On your way back to work? Yeah, right. Wait for me. I'll walk with you. How's it coming, Blackie? Okay. Blackie, look out! Oh! Blackie! Somebody bounced that crate off the derrick on purpose. Yes, but thanks to your warning, not on me. Come in. Hello, Sam. Hi, Blackie. Why the gun? I just thought you might be the killer coming after me. (laughs) Ha ha, very funny. What are you doing out so late? Oh, uh, I stopped by Maggie's place for a bite to eat, and I saw your light. So I came over to see if anything's wrong. Oh, no. Everything's fine. Just fine. Blackie, I wouldn't change places with you for nothing. Big go, Sam. Sure, but with a killer running loose, no thanks. What gets me, Blackie, is why they don't arrest Foghorn. Why should they arrest him? Why? He's the killer. Yeah? You yourself said you heard him fighting with Palmer over the size of the cut. Yeah. Only I still don't understand how nobody heard the shot. I said that before to you. Yes, you did, now that I recall. Yeah, I told you that. Want to know why they don't arrest Foghorn for the murder? Yeah. Because he didn't kill Palmer. You did. What? That's right. Only the killer knew there were more than one shot. And you said shots. I just realized that. Blackie, you're crazy. No, no, you are. For thinking you could get away with it. Oh, you're out of your head. You killed Sloan so that you could get his job and work your way in at that dock. And then you killed Palmer so you could take over. But uh, I got in your way. I tried to scare you off of that crate I dropped, but I missed you. Only now I'm going to take care of you. That's what you think. What happened to the lights? They're out, just like you'll be if you don't drop that gun. Yeah. You don't think I'm going to stand still while I talk? <laughs> Keep on shooting, Sam. You're telling me where you are. Okay, Sam. Now I'll take that gun. There. Now to turn on the light. So I... I didn't knock you out, Sam. I guess I must be slipping. What are, what are you going to do with me? Turn you over to Faraday. And clean up this waterfront. Clean up? 
You mean you're not holding on to the racket? Oh, don't be a chump. So what was all this business about running things? I wanted the killer to come after me with his gun. I needed it for evidence. And I've got it and him. <laughs> Hiya, Maggie. Blackie, you lovable son of a gun. Sit right down while I get you something on the house. <laughs> well, thanks. That's the least I can do for you. After the way you cleaned them rats off the waterfront. I think you have me confused with two other guys. Well, is that so? Listen, Blackie, it's a different waterfront with them rackets gone. The fellas are different. Oh, thank Just you. listen to the sound of that talk. There's laughing in it, Blackie, and you put it there. <laughs> Maggie, you embarrassed. Yeah, I'd like to hug you. Well, well I'd like a glass of water, if okay, you don't mind. Okay, okay. Here, I can take a hint. <laughs> You know, you really put yourself right smack in the front of a shooting gallery to catch them properly. Oh, I knew he wouldn't take any shots at me when there were people around. Well, what about that falling crate? Oh, that was just a scammy. Yeah, I bet he's sorry he missed. Are you? Of course not. <laughs> well, I'm glad I asked you that question instead of Faraday. <laughs> If you want a beer with flavor, a flavor that's delightfully different, try the million-dollar flavor of Champagne Velvet Beer. It's just as smooth. Now, there's a suggestion for the person who has yet to try Champagne Velvet. You'll find CV to be the smoothest, most mellow beer you ever tasted. More than that, you'll like its brightness, its sparkle, and the clear, clean taste. That makes you sure it's pure. In addition, you'll enjoy the rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor that proves CV's premium quality. Premium quality that is yours to enjoy at no premium in price. That's why our enthusiastic friend says... Try it. Just try CV and you'll agree there is no finer beer. You're sure it's pure. And it's just as smooth... Just as smooth. And now, here's a glimpse of what happens in next week's Boston Blackie Adventure. All right, come on, roll up. Right, come on, come on, come on. Charlie, enough already with that crazy slot machine. You've been at it for half an hour. I tell you, it's going to pay off on that jackpot right now. Hey, where'd you get that guarantee? This Club 77 is a chip joint. Hey, not so loud. I'm only going to play it once more anyway. Uh, here goes. You're wasting your money. Okay, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, uh, one pay. Hey, the jackpot's hey, look at that. Hey, look, two bells. This is going to be it. Oh. Give me your hat, quick. Yeah, here, here, here. Three bells. The jackpot. Come the papa. You put it in look the jackpot. That. Hey, what is this? Why don't the jackpot come out? There is no jackpot, sucker. Just a little hunk of metal. Yeah, well, wait till you hear what I'm going to do about that. Just wait till I... All right, all right. What's your trouble, my friend? I've been robbed. I want to see the boss of this Club yeah. 77. You were looking at him. Yeah? I'm Archie Grant. Yeah. What's your beef? I hit the jackpot. You yeah, can see for did. yourself. And all that came out was this hunk of metal. I don't want this disc. I want the jackpot. Now, take it easy, my friend. I'm going to get that there jackpot. There was only about $50 in the jackpot. With that metal tag that came out, I'm going to give you $1,000. <laughs> 